boo all over again. I'll go with uh, Senators, I thank you for passing that bill. Okay, thank you. And we're going to go to uh, Representative Lawrence's next bill, and then we're going to jump over to uh, Representative Coleman and then uh, Thorpe. So let's get to 2022. Mr. Chairman, members, laws. Well, I just, I just, it just understands. We, as a courtesy, as the members come in, we we hear their bills so that they're, they're unlike us, they they can get home and have dinner at a reasonable time. Okay. Yeah, I live three hours from here, so. I'm <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members, laws 2000, chapter 119, amended statute to state that the criminally negligent discharge of a firearm within or into the limits of a municipality is a class six felony. House Bill 2022 adds an exemption to the unlawful discharge of a firearm within to or within a municipality to include the use of rat shot or snake shot pellets. Pellets must be 1.3 millimeters in diameter or less, loaded in a rimfire cartridge, and fired from a firearm not exceeding a caliber of 22 hundredths of an inch. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions? Okay, thank you. The bill's sponsor, would you care to speak to your rat shot? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, let's move the bill real quick. Cause we'll, yes, we often, I often forget. Hmm? What? Okay, we'll discuss it first. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, first of all, the bill is misnamed. By calling it rat shot or snake shot, that's not what it is. It is a very small pellet. And I have Dave Kopp here from the Civil Defense League who can explain uh, more about the shot itself. When this bill came up uh, on the floor of the House, I volunteered to let someone shoot me with snake shot. The amount of volunteers, including my seatmate was amazing. A huge turnout of those who said yes. If you throw a handful of sand in the air, that is approximately the distance of this shot. The pellet itself is the size of a grain of most grains of sand. It is just another opportunity for those who have firearms to use another form of ammunition. It is not harmful to people at all, and in fact within 12 to 13, 14 feet, it's not harmful at all. And I would ask Mr. Kopp if he would further discuss this bill with your with your permission mr chairman well first let's see if we have any questions for the sponsor no okay uh and mr Cop yeah Sen senator Borelli. Uh, thank you mr chairman uh <coughs> representative lawrence did anybody did you so did anybody shoot at you uh i managed to change my mind okay senator Borelli, but i thank you for the question <laughs> and to those members of the committee that want to volunteer again Forget it. <laughs> to, to shoot or be shot? <laughs> either, either, Mr. Chairman. All right. So we have Dave Kopp. Arizona Citizens Defense League. <clears throat> Afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members, Dave Kopp, Arizona Citizens Defense League. I'm not sure what I could really add to the sponsor's uh, excellent description, and uh, basically, to imagine. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, the shot in question is is basically harmless, uh, certainly to people anyway. Uh, were you to use it to shoot at rats or snakes, it would probably be pretty harmful to them, but uh, or at least at very short distances. Uh, it isn't meant to carry any long distance, and it certainly wouldn't carry very long distance, uh, not from a 22 shell. And so uh, we don't see it as any sort of a public safety risk. I don't imagine really anybody does. So uh, we support the bill for that reason. It isn't, uh, it isn't a public safety problem. And would it be fair to say that you would probably be at greater risk if somebody were to point a, a Roman candle at you or 
throw a firecracker at you? Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, it would probably be safe to say that you'd be at greater risk from a thrown rock. Any other questions? Yes, Senator. Well, um, Mr. Chairman, um, David? Yeah. David? Uh, how are... Uh, how are people currently dealing with the epidemic of attacks from rats? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Senator Only Mendez. Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think you used a tourniquet and <laughs> you scream for help. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Mendez, I don't honestly know how to answer that question. Uh, I, for, for myself, I don't have a rat problem, and when I see a snake, I basically run the other direction. So. Um, I, I really couldn't honestly answer that question. I think that's dependent upon where you're bitten. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, continue. Mr. Chairman and, and David, you, uh, you referenced the option um, of throwing rocks and that being more impactful. Is it just, are we, do we not have enough rocks around? Should we probably be equipping people with rocks? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Senator Mendez, I, I guess that's an option. Yeah. If you have the option. Yeah, to, to that point, that, that assumes, A, you have a rock handy that's not next to the snake, and, and B, you're good that you've had a history of playing Little League baseball uh, so you can hit them. Because I believe this, this particular round has a, like a, I'm trying to think of a term, like a scatter effect. Mr. So, Chairman, it's, it's called a spread, yeah. Right, so you don't, have to, you don't have to actually hit like with a bullet and be precise. You can hit in a general circle around the cone that goes out of the shot. Mr. Chairman, members, yeah, that's the base, basic concept of shot of any kind is that uh, your, your accuracy requirements are considerably less than with a rifle or a pistol. Okay. Chair. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, David, um, a BB and a BB gun, can you, can you just tell me the size of the pellet? Because what this comes down to be is like a, like a very small shotgun bullet because it does the same equivalent of what like a shotgun would do in a sense a shotgun shell the spread the bull, the bb's inside of it so when we look at just a bb itself a single bb those that are going to be in this new shot that we're talking about what what's the size difference in the sense of what a bb one single bb looks like is it the is it that same size Mr. Chairman, Senator Contreras, uh, I couldn't give you an exact ratio. I'd have to sit down and figure it out, but they are a good bit smaller than a baby. Okay, um, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Um, now, David, I think I think uh, I think you would agree with me that when a baby strikes a person's eye, people have lost vision in their eye when just being struck by a single pellet of a baby, right? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Contreras, uh, if they get struck in the eye, uh, uh, I've been shot by BB guns. Uh, I had kind of a rough neighborhood growing up, so uh, <laughs> that was the kind of thing we did, just goofing off. we shoot each other with BB guns. So, uh, yeah, if you got hit in the eye, I think, yeah, that would be not a good outcome, but uh, if you got hit pretty much anywhere else, you get a little bit of a welt, and that's it. For the Speaking from personal experience. Point, we're talking about a BB gun size rat pellet and not this... Um, different shot right yeah mr chairman yes yes to that point but no one is showing us exactly what this bb is going to look like in there because a bb gun round and something that goes into a shotgun round people will look at a shotgun and a bb gun as two different animal uh, two different guns but literally it's a compound of a bunch of little bbs that goes in a bb gun so when you talk about a bb that's going to be put in this one and not show us what what exactly close enough to what it's going to be we could assume that they're going to go with the same bbs that are being used in either that in what they use currently so when i look at that and you say yes it, it could possibly well there has been individuals that have lost their eyesight due to a bb so that 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 has happened to the point so i think it's important though, the sponsor compared it to sand <laughs> and senator borelli compared it to salt so to, to, can you, to, 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 to keep and it's not in a shot a large shotgun size cartridge mm -hmm. it's in a tiny 22 cartridge so there are distinctions that I just don't want yeah, to get no, lost no. in the discussion and to that point yes there are there, there are distinctions and I know what a 22 shell looks like and and I know what a shotgun shell looks like um, and, and I know what the BBs of a BB gun and a BB that's inside a shotgun shell looks like 
And that's what I'm trying to compare this with. I'm trying to get clarification on this because a shotgun can do a lot of damage to you because there's more pressure behind it. A BB gun can still do a lot of damage to a person if hit in the eye or anything like that. And that's just one BB. So now we're talking about something in a 22 shell, which a 22 shell has more potential than a BB gun. So when we talk about that, it, we look at the pressure of what's going to come out of that 22 shell, how fast they're going to come out, and I and you and I both know it's not going to be like just sand going up. It's going to have a little more pressure behind it. But to the point, and, just a minute. He, he didn't say the speed was that of throwing sand. I, I don't believe you said the speed was the flowing. I think you said the, the, the distance was like throwing sand. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Contreras, uh, I could maybe give you a bit of a relative comparison. Uh, a BB is about the size of a 22 bullet, r roughly in diameter. So if you could picture the, the grains that are coming out are going to be a fair bit smaller because you'd have to fit a, a dozen or so of them in that same diameter as a BB. Senator so, like Borelli. I, said, I couldn't give you the exact <laughs> ratio. Senator Borelli, to the point. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Kopp. And to, to that point, a BB is a lot smaller in caliber than a 22, and is and I've seen those cartridges, and it is like little grains of sand inside that cartridge, or uh, or or salt, and and a BB, the velocity of a BB, I can I can nail that clock all day long with a BB gun, but I'm not going to hit that clock with a with a 22 uh, caliber cartridge with any of this uh, s small tiny material in it it may not even even get even near you because by the time it dissipates it's really only applicable for very short range anyway I, I think it might it's be generally fair. and it's generally going to be used out of a riot out of a pistol not a, not a rifle because why would you want to ruin a rifle but uh, with that stuff but uh, it's uh, a BB is a, a lot smaller than a 22 caliber if you're looking for comparison, I, 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 just from what I've seen, I, I would think that perhaps you'd be talking about a, a pea standing next to a cantaloupe. <laughs> or a ping pong ball next to a bowling ball. It's, it's a very small fraction. It's like grains of salt. All right. Any other discussion, questions, Senator Mendez? Mr. Chairman, uh, I don't really know if this question is applicable to David, but... Um, we, I don't really got a lot of experience with shooting. Uh, I don't really know what people are trying to do shooting at snakes or rats. Um, I did let Gowan and Thorpe take me out to the shooting range. And I don't, I don't know if this is on, on task for, ev for everybody else, but, uh, they can't shoot anything. And <laughs> I, I agree with that. I, I agree. I concur. Uh, <laughs> I had a much better aim, and I had never shot a gun before. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I would like to testify that I've never seen him <laughs> But uh, they did bring up a lot of concerns in that um, all this, uh, the shooting range, just the floor was littered with lead, like to the point where they had to come in every couple of months and dig it all out uh, because it was poisonous for the ground, because it just, sh just shouldn't be there. Uh, and I'm, I'm starting to, are, are we just, um, is there like a limit to like how people can just shoot their guns in their backyard? Or, I mean, are they just gonna be able to just keep spraying bullets but until to, they're, to that point, until they're content? This is not for target shooting. So you're not gonna go buy a box of 50 and, 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 and spend you know a half hour shooting. A person's only going to do this when they encounter uh, a threatening snake or, or, or rat, but today, which today, I, I would no, not think not, is too often. We're not putting a rational check on this. I mean, we're letting anybody do this. We're not just assuming rational people are going to be doing this. Well, we won't let Thorpe do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but again, even, even irrational people are, are only going to use this when they encounter a threatening situation. And, I mean, I've lived here since 19... 93, and I can, you know, maybe if I, I've, had, I've only had a few situations where I stumbled upon uh, very closely to a snake, and I've had no rats outside of a legislature. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator, um, 
I think would maybe alleviate your concern somewhat. Uh, as, as somebody who shoots a fair bit, nobody in their right mind would use these rounds to target shoot. It, it's just not something you would do. Uh, they don't have any range to speak of. They wouldn't really penetrate a target to the point where you would get a, a reasonable picture of where you were shooting. Uh, and one, one of the enjoyable things, as you probably know from your experience, one of the enjoyable things about target shooting is you see the bullet holes in your target. You say, hey, I, I hit the bullseye, or, or maybe I hit close to the bullseye, or I hit something at least. Uh, with this, basically all you'd get is what looks like a little sand pattern in there. And, and hopefully somewhere close to where you were aiming. So I mean, for, from the point of view of target shooting, it wouldn't give you any visceral impact. It, you get no feedback. Yeah, yeah, a so trick just, uh, to just, to the point, just to, point and then you Yeah, just up. to clarify, he didn't mean to actually shoot a bull in the eye, so. <laughs> but to the point, do we, I mean, I don't really, I mean, we don't let people shoot guns in the city regularly. Are we gonna have to worry about them, whether or not they're cleaning up their backyard and, and whether we're getting all, all this, bullets or pellets or stuff everywhere? I mean, do we not have to worry about that? I, I, I won't be losing much sleep. Well, Mr. Chairman, Senator, again, I, I don't think you'll find anybody using these for recreation. Uh, if they, I think if they have to use it in the case of shooting a rat or a snake or some other sort of animal, I think you'll find that they'll clean up their yard because they want their yard clean. And other than that, I don't see it being a problem. And I, and I think it's, it would be a rare occurrence that you're going to have exactly. to. I mean, I, if I lived in a house where I had to do this all the time, I'd think I'd move. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any other discussion? All right. Let's move the bill. Yeah, we have some folks that want oh, to. Oh, speak. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so okay. Del Dolores uh, Varga. Dolores. Is Dolores here. Um, okay, we got a lot of no shows today. What, yeah, uh, okay. What about. Uh, okay. I'm going to have a hard time with this. Please forgive me. How about Miss Larson? Risha, thank you. Okay. Risha Kota Larson. Yay, we have fun. We got somebody here. <laughs> and thank you for showing up. Of course. <laughs> Mr. Chair and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to comment on House Bill 2020, 2022. Mr. Chair, my statement is approximately three and a half minutes long, so I respectively, respectfully appreciate your indulgence in allowing me to present my statement in its entirety. I would like to first comment on the lack of necessity for House Bill 2022. It is abundantly clear that any situation in which a person decides to discharge a firearm is already covered by Arizona law without this proposed exception. Please note that sections 2 and 3 of ARS 13, 13107 thoroughly address the recreational use of firearms, and subsection 10 thoroughly addresses the topic of self-defense against animals, which would of course include wildlife, such as snakes and rats. Secondly, I would like to comment on the impact of House Bill 2022 on law enforcement. First responders will be unnecessarily burdened by House Bill 2022. This is because there is no doubt that alarmed citizens will call 911 if they hear a firearm being discharged in their neighborhood. Proponents have said that House Bill 2022 will allow people to shoot at whatever they want, whenever they want to. This will lead to an increased use of firearms in densely populated areas, as there is no limit specified on how often this type of firearm can be discharged. Thirdly, I would like to comment on the impact of House Bill 2022 on our state's wildlife. Allowing the use of firearms by private citizens to control what they perceive as problem wildlife risks breaching Arizona game and fish regulations. According to the service's website, 11 species of reptile are protected in Arizona and two amphibian species are protected under the Federal Endangered Species Act. 34 Arizona mammals are identified of, as species of greatest conservation need and nine are also protected under the Federal Endangered Species Act. We cannot be sure that every citizen who chooses to discharge this type of firearm against wildlife is knowledgeable of our state's protected species and aware of the penalties for harming or harassing protected species. I note with concern that House Bill 2022 provides a loophole to avoid prosecution if protected wildlife species 
are harmed as a result of this legislation. Fourth, I would like to comment on the impact of House Bill 2022 on local wildlife control businesses. On the Arizona Game and Fish website, there is a list of 60 wildlife control businesses. In addition, a Google search for the Tucson area returned more than a dozen additional local businesses with several specializing in certain species, such as snakes and rats. There are already many solutions in place to deal with citizen wildlife complaints and removal requests. Many are local businesses, and if citizens take wildlife removal matters into their own hands, these local businesses could be harmed financially. In addition, there is an abundance of information available to the public through the Arizona Fish and Game and elsewhere, which provides common sense solutions for minimizing human wildlife conflicts. Finally, I would like to say that through my work as at the nonprofit organization Animiticus, I work with wildlife conservationists around the world, from Vietnam to Zimbabwe and beyond. And I am proud to tell you that the United States is viewed as a leader in protecting its wildlife. However, House Bill 2022 provides a legal loophole for harassment and harming of wildlife. It is an unsightly blemish on wildlife conservation in the United States an embarrassment which will hinder our ability to lead by example in the international wildlife conservation community. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, Mulaney Hardesty. Mulaney. Okay, let's see if I can find somebody else here. Julie Golding. Okay, well, I know we have one here as a surefire. Julie. We have we're way back to the top here. Anybody in the room on the list who hasn't called? Okay. Yeah. Who are you, are you identify yourself? Melissa. Melissa. Why well, you start walking up? And come on up, we'll find you. Melissa Amarello. Yeah. Okay. Sandy Barr. And and Sandy Barr. Sandy Barr. Found, there's Sandy Barr. I can found one. Okay. Okay. Please uh, proceed. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the committee, and thank you for this opportunity to speak today on behalf of snakes and other wildlife and also residents of the cities of Arizona. Um, this has already been covered somewhat, but I just want to emphasize my main point is that there are safer and more effective ways to resolve wildlife conflicts than discharging firearms in populated areas. This bill is unnecessary. Um, again, as already been mentioned, there are already exceptions for self-defense and also for wildlife professionals to deal with human wildlife conflicts in populated areas. There are also exceptions in this bill to provide for opportunities for recreational shooting. And I would put forth that we do not need another opportunity that this amendment would provide. This bill endangers the public, it endangers our native wildlife, and it endangers our economy. By allowing shooting in neighborhoods and near schools and encouraging people to approach rather than walk away from potentially dangerous animals is a, is a bad idea, and that's, this puts the public at risk. Most snake bites happen when people are handling or trying to kill snakes. The remainder of bites happen when someone places their foot or their hand too close to an unseen snake. This bill would not alleviate either of those situations and in fact is likely to increase snake bites by encouraging people to approach. Um, it was mentioned that in order to be effective, one has to be very close to the snake or small mammal to use this type of shot. And so by putting this amendment forward, we're basically telling people to go toward, get within 10 feet, as close as five foot, to what we're perceiving as a dangerous animal, instead of walking away. Zero snake bites happen when you see a snake and walk away. The safest course of action when a venomous animal is observed is always to walk away in the opposite direction as calmly as possible and call a wildlife professional if you feel that it is necessary instead of taking matters into your own hands. This bill only specifies the type of shot that we're making an exception for. Doesn't say that you have to feel threatened, doesn't say it has to be in self-defense, it doesn't say you only can use it for snakes and rats. 
we're basically just giving people permission to, as Senator Mendez mentioned, pump their yards full of lead if they would like, because this shot is made of lead, which is poisonous. Um, so again, there are safer and more effective ways of resolving wildlife conflicts, and so I would encourage you all to vote no on this bill. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions? I, Thank I, I yeah. have a question. Senator Burley. Uh, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Um, are you so you're a wildlife expert? Have you ever came across a Mojave Green? The Mr. Chair, Senator Borelli, yes, I'm sorry, I should have fully introduced myself. I am the co-founder and director of education for Ad Advocates for Snake Preservation. I have a master's of biology and an undergraduate degree in wildlife management and decades of experience working with all sorts of rattlesnakes, including Mojave greens, which are just a color of Mojaves. And they get a really bad reputation. They can tend to react defensively. Luckily, most Mojaves don't have that neurotoxic venom that we're also scared. That's, it certainly exists in some parts of the state, but not elsewhere. And again, walking away is always the safest thing. Um, snakes don't chase. They're more scared of us than we are of them. Um, we're so much bigger than they are, right? And we have shovels. We have guns. Um, we're huge. You can outrun them. Mr. Chairman, and yes, ma'am, and to that point, I've uh, actually, with my son, in Lake Havasu, gone down to the lake to fish, and it's in the city limits. And I did encounter one, and he, that baby was pretty aggressive. And uh, I, I didn't know. I first moved to Arizona, so I didn't know. So I, I have, a, I carried a 22 as a sidearm, and I had snake shot in it, and I, I, I shot at him, and it get, scared him off really good. It didn't hurt him, but it gave me that time to really disengage. I was really afraid for my six-year-old. So yeah, but thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Borelli, thank you for that comment and that story. It's always nice to hear from, you know, non-snake people about their encounters with snakes. And I think that that is a, a really good and perfect example of the best situation. You know, another um, potential outcome could have been that the snake was startled if he got some of those grains of salt in his eyes um, and in trying to escape, may have actually come toward you guys, could have happened as well, um, which is why I usually encourage, I always encourage people to just back away, not back away, turn around and look where you're going, just in case he's not the only one, and then walk away from that snake. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, and I'm sure Senator Borelli appreciates your characterization of him as a non-snake person. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy Barr. <laughs> I love this. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I'm Sandy Byer. I'm the chapter director for Sierra Club's Grand Canyon chapter, and we are opposed to House Bill 2022. Now, um, in today's committee, there, um, the proponents of the bill didn't talk specifically about snakes, but the testimony in the House was all focused on snakes, and that was one of the key concerns uh, that caused us to oppose this bill. I would point out that, um, as has been mentioned before, um, this bill really is about promoting shooting of snakes and rats and, and, and other um, creatures. Uh, birds also can be killed with snake and rat shot. And uh, as has been pointed out, there are already exceptions in the law for taking wildlife with valid permits, including uh, for what is considered nuisance wildlife. Uh, because this bill specifically calls out snake shot and rat shot, and the testimony was focused on that, uh, we think that they really are focused on promoting shooting snakes. Uh, there are obvious public safety concerns with shooting in residential areas, and I, I would point out, um, and you know, you, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm an expert on firearms, although I did take hunter safety when I was 12, so. Um, You've sworn off guns since all that. Rat, uh, rat shot is also used in some types of frangible ammunition, uh, ammunition, basically where they glue the, it's, there's a glue that holds the shot together. And when that happens, it, it has the same killing power as a bullet. So I just want to point out that that is one other way that it can be used. Um, and uh, I don't believe this bill addresses that. So I, I, I think that is something that you might want to think about. Um, 
This bill sends a bad message about wildlife. Uh, several of our native snakes are threatened and endangered. Many are also non-venomous. Uh, encouraging people to shoot first and ask questions later is not a good idea. Uh, if there is a venomous snake in your home or yard, there are many appropriate ways to have it removed. Uh, likewise, there are more appropriate ways to address rodents. Taking action to prevent them from getting into your house, of course, is the best. Uh, and uh, um, obviously, there are opportunities to call uh, experts. Um, um, some fire departments will come out and, and help uh, move them. And a lot of animals just move along on their own. Uh, other concerns, uh, obviously, the lead shot issue has been brought up, but one I would add to that, in addition to the fact that uh, uh, kids eating dirt and ingesting uh, lead, that would be very bad, uh, but uh, killing things with lead and leaving them laying around, other animals will eat them and can uh, be poisoned. Uh, um, certain bird species, golden eagles, for example, uh, um, uh, can't. Um, they can't process the lead uh, and uh, will uh, die from lead poisoning from ingesting even a very small amount of lead. Uh, we should be encouraging education about and appreciation of native wildlife, not shooting these animals or poisoning other animals. Uh, we hope you'll oppose House Bill 2022. It's unwise, unnecessary, and there are other legitimate ways of addressing uh, issues uh, with um, nuisance wildlife. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, all right. Well, uh, let's move the bill. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. I move that uh, House Bill 2022 receive a due pass recommendation. Okay. I would uh, just make a couple of comments. Uh, first, I, I, I'm not too moved by the lead contamination argument because, you know, this, someone's not going to be in their backyard doing repetitive continuous target practice this is going to be used when the person is either protecting themselves from a snake or or a rodent or maybe the person's using it for rodent control uh, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story which I think uh, will probably uh, cause uh, cause me to be uh, endeared by Senator Farnsworth uh, at, at one time in my life I actually had a chicken coop and one of the problems with chicken coops is that they attract field mice because you have to have the the feed out and, and the mice come and they want to eat the chickens feed and uh, one way that I dealt with that was I used uh, it wasn't this type I actually used little 22 mini shotgun shells so it's it's like this but the pellets are larger these are, are much smaller pellets but they were a very effective way to kill the field mice and uh, and I didn't want to put poison out because you don't want the chickens to eat the poison, you don't want other animals to eat the poison. So, I mean, this is also a reasonable way to deal with, with nuisances. Now, uh, one of the speakers made reference to the fact that this is already legal. And I guess it is legal uh, if you're doing it for nuisance purposes, but only if you get a state permit from Fish and Game. And I think that the, their idea of nuisance wildlife it, it wasn't field mice. I think they were thinking of, of, of other types of wildlife that they want you to get a permit before you start killing if they're a nuisance. And the municipal uh, exemption for self-protection uh, involves establishing that a reasonable person would use deadly force. You know, it's almost like the use of deadly force against a person. And, and you wind up having a pretty big standard of proof to justify your taking out a rodent uh, in your backyard. So uh, I think the purpose of uh, Representative Lawrence's bill is to not get somebody mired in the fishing game regulatory process or in court attempting to prove a use of deadly force justification because they took down a field mouse. Uh, so with that, I don't really have a problem with the bill. Uh, but anybody else want to make to weigh in on this? All right. Then let's uh, call the roll. Hi. Mr. Chairman. You may. As a non-snake person, I vote aye. Mr. Chairman. You may. Uh, I can't think of a worse way to deal with wildlife, whether they're a nuisance or, or not. Um, this, is, uh, this is a very troubling bill, and I'm sorry that we're having to deal with this. I vote no. No. 
I can explain my vote. You may. Um, ninety percent of the of the of the, uh, of the um, snakes that we have here are non venomous, um, and snakes eat rats. So if we want to have self control over the rats, get yourself a couple of snakes and take them over to your house, and you'll con pretty much take care of that whole situation. And not we won't have to be passing this bill. So with that, I vote no. Yes or no? <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, you may. Um, I think we're losing sight of something here. It says not really specifying in, in residential areas. It says within the city limits or city limits of a municipality. We have to remember that we have folks in the state that don't live in Phoenix or Tucson where it's, it's very... Uh, city we have a lot of municipalities that are out there throughout the state very rural uh, that the wildlife is just there and sometimes they they go to where there are humans because somebody's got a birds out there and the bird seed falls on the ground and then next thing you know the mice start eating the bird seed and then it starts attracting the snakes and then, of course, then the coyotes, and then they're all in the municipality. Uh, and sometimes you need to, and of course, the coyotes are eating everybody's pets. Uh, sometimes you need to, like, thin that out. So, um, you know, we have to remember and be respectful of other communities that are not as blessed as Tempe or Mesa and Phoenix. That's what's all the concrete jungle. So uh, with that, I vote aye. Right. Well, to Senator Contreras's point, uh, I think that um, I, don't think I, I, I don't think many people are in a position to identify uh, which is a hazardous snake and which isn't a hazardous snake. I still can't remember if it's red on yellow, happy fellow, or whatever that rhyme goes. I mean, you see a, a snake, and if, if they're in an aggressive posture, uh, you know, I don't need a master's degree in herbology to uh, know I'm going to have to either run or or use force, so uh, you know I, I don't think you can count on people to do that. Uh, for to Senator Mendez, I, I, I can think of plenty of worse ways, like hand grenades, but we're not going that <laughs> far here. We're fishing, I guess. Yeah. But in any event, uh, I, I think this uh, is not going to be used that often. I think it's, the sponsor has proven that it really doesn't pose a hazard any, to anybody, really. Uh, and it just it, it, it lets the, the person who has to use it occasionally uh, avoid being cited by game and fish for not having a license or being dragged into criminal court having to prove that they uh, had a reasonable belief in the immediate necessity to use this to protect themselves against imminent the threat of imminent death uh, or serious injury which might not even apply if it's a rodent or a snake so with that I vote aye. Mentally voted four eyes three nays are not voting you have given House Bill 2022 a due pass recommendation. Mr. Chairman, committee, I thank you for your vote. Thank oh, you. I hope you don't have any more bills because you've already used up your session I, quota. I'm and, two for two. I'm leaving. <laughs> all right. 2026. 2026.